Let's move on to the competitive actions, which I referred to at a high level in the previous slides. We're going to get into them in a bit more detail now. There are really three drivers of competitive behavior which are influenced by market commonality and, and resource simil similarity. The first of these is awareness. This is the extent to which competitors recognize the degree of mutual interdependence that results from market commonality and resource similarity. Um, and it's really a, a prerequisite to competitive action. If I don't know that you're my competitor, if I'm not aware um, that we share um, common markets or uh, resource similarity, it's impossible for me to take competitive action and vice versa. So awareness is first and foremost. You've got to know it before you can deal with it. Motivation is the incentive that a firm has to take an action or to respond to a competitor's um, attack, and it's related to a perceived gains and losses. In other words, the fact that you've done something, I may know you're a competitor, so I've got awareness, but if what you've done I perceive as having little to no impact on me from a gains and losses perspective. It's not going to take market share away from me. It's not going to um, impact my ability to uh, get the, the supplies I need or other resources I need to be competitive. Then I'm less likely to take an action. On the other hand, if I perceive an action you've taken to be to take to to have a substantial impact on my uh, capabilities. I mean, I, I will perceive it as something that requires significant ad action on my part, and that would be the definition of motivation. Am I motivated to act? And finally, ability. I may be aware that you're competing against me, and I may be motivated to do something about it, but if I don't have the resources that allow me to be competitive and have a flex and be flexible in terms of my ability to response, respond to you, um, it's it's not especially meaningful. I'm in a weak position. I need to have all three in terms of competition. I need to be aware, I have to have the motivation to do something, and I have to have the ability to do it. Let's think about some of the things that would drive those three, um, three elements of competitive actions. First, in, is likelihood of of attack factors. If I understand that my if I understand my competitor's awareness, motivation, and ability, um, it to predict the likelihood of an attack, I'm more likely to uh, take an action to move against that competitor, and I might take strategic actions or tactical tactical actions in response to an attack by that competitor. Strategic actions and responses are market-based moves that, that signify a significant commitment by my organization to pursue a strategy. So that if I perceive an attack, either in an, uh, a, an impending attack or there is, in fact, an actual attack, attack, I might consider fundamentally changing my strategy, rethinking the core strategy that I've implemented. The problem with that is it's very difficult to implement and it's very difficult to reverse. So. Uh, you don't want to be making ta uh, strategic decisions purely on a um, responsive basis. Otherwise, what ends up happening is you're constantly trying to move the ship from one place to another and rarely in a position to, to sort of dictate exactly the course that you want to take with your business the, in, terms of, um, in terms of your strategy. So it's a, those actions and responses have to be um, taken only when you believe that there's a serious need to respond. The alternative is tactical actions and responses, and these are moves that re involve much fewer resources to fine-tune, and they're, they're, I'm sorry, and they're meant to fine-tune your strategy that's already in place. So you're, you're going to stick with your core strategy. If your strategy is, um, is to, if you're FedEx and your strategy is to be in the business of, of worldwide shipment of freight and packages, you don't change away from that strategy, but you might implement a better logistics system that allows you to um, fine-tune that strategy that, so that you can be more competitive against UPS or another competitor. It's, it's somewhat easier to implement and certainly easier to reverse because you're not fundamentally changing your strategy. Likelihood of response actions are, are respond, the, these sort of are dictated by um, who's moving and when in terms of taking on new strategic opportunities within the market. 
It's called mover advantage. First mover advantage is when firms take the initial competitive action to build or to defend competitive advantages or to improve their market positions. So they're the ones taking the, the, the risk. They um, often work off of their existing capabilities, the strategic foundation of either research or development capabilities. And these tend to be the firms that are more aggressive and the ones that are willing to take on uh, more innovation. Uh, it's a higher um, yet reasonable risk. And um, you need to have buffer resources, resources that can allow you to um, allocate new support actions. Buffer resources are essentially those extra resources that go above and beyond supporting your day-to-day -day business. If you don't have the buffer resources, anytime you shift into innovation mode, um, there will always be challenges. And the, if you don't have the extra resources to manage those challenges, it can be very difficult uh, to, be, to be in a first mover, advantage, uh, first, first mover position. Um, the benefit of doing this can be substantial. Uh, you, you'll be the first one in the market. You'll define the market. This is much more like a blue ocean approach. Um, and so from that perspective, there are huge advantages. The disadvantages or the risks are that you've got to get up to a learning curve. No one's ever done what you're doing. The po probability that you'll make mistakes is greater. Uh, but if you're able to execute, first mover can put you at a substantial advantage over your competitors. There are other stages of mover. There is what's called second mover. These are the firms that is sort of the, the, the quick followers. They respond to the first mover with through imitation. Obviously, they're more cautious than the first movers, but they also they study the customer reaction. They figure out what works and what doesn't in terms of customer reaction to the innovation, and they learn from the mistakes of the first movers. That makes the the process somewhat less risky, and then they take advantage of the time to develop processes and technology that are better, more efficient uh, than their first movers. So they tend to have a slight price advantage, uh, quality advantage. Um, they're not going to benefit from the dominance that comes from first mover. Um, therefore, their returns can be potentially lowered. But they're still out there in terms of innovation out ahead of most of the rest of competition. Then there are the late movers. And these are the people, who, the firms that come into market relatively late in the elapsed time since the first and second movers entered the market. Um, certainly, they have substantially reduced risk because if the product is well-liked and they're in it now, they know it's well-liked, but their returns will be down too because the first movers and to some degree second movers will have already locked up a big chunk of the market. And so they're forced almost exclusively into what is a true red ocean strategy. That is their eating, fighting um, for market share they're, they're, it's a fairly bloody approach to competition. They're not creating a new space in which to compete. Another likelihood of response action, or for the, that's a term the book likes to use, but essentially what causes responses or doesn't, why would I respond or why wouldn't I, is organizational size. Small firms typically are in a position to act um, with greater flexibility. They're more nimble. They're more capable of responding quickly. So to the extent that they will respond, they are more likely to respond quickly. They rely on speed and surprise to defend their competitive advantage. And um, they're able to use a greater variety of competitive behavior options. They're able to consider in a variety of innovations um, they can adapt their strategies more quickly, uh, again, because the bigger your size, it's like trying to write the Queen Mary or another, um, or the Titanic or another ocean ship, very hard to turn it. But if you have a small motorboat, you're able to kind of turn it quickly. That's true in businesses as well. So small firms tend to be able to respond more rapidly. A large firm f firms have a different kind of advantage, which is they have a lot of slack. That is the extra capabilities. Um, so that if they implement in innovations, they can continue to focus on their existing clients while they add innovation. Smaller firms tend to have not have that advantage. They can't do multiple things at once or not as effectively. And so they have to move very quickly to move from market to market because they don't want to anger their existing clients uh, while they're trying to reallocate resources to a new strategy. Whereas larger businesses have the ability to think about 
uh, adding new innovative lines while they continue to support existing legacy lines. Um, they have a greater likelihood of being able to initi initiate competitive and strategic actions over the longer haul because of that. Uh, and they tend to rely on a limited variety of competitive actions. In other words, they'll, they'll be less innovative um, and just because they have a variety of infrastructure and scale in place that can sometimes slow them down and it can reduce their long-term competitive success if they aren't able to implement as many options as the smaller, more nimble firms. Another way to, res another response action is the approach you take to quality. Customer perception that firms' goods or services perform in a way that's important to the customers or meets or exceeds their expectations will often allow firms to uh, take on new innovation or take on new challenges because the customer is willing to go with them even down a road that's perhaps uncharted at this point. So to some degree, um, the movement on in terms of, of new competitive spaces is always easier for firms that are perceived to have higher levels of quality. 